Hey everybody, it's Gecko here, back with another daily walk and talk. Rocking out to ACDC's Hell's Bells as they finish the construction on the house over there. So, welcome reprieve from the Hispanic music that is usually playing. Not that I mind. It has its own allure. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> it's another beautiful day here in Central Texas. And uh, thought I'd go for a walk. So, I mean, not really much has changed since yesterday. Well, I say that, but it actually kind of has. Um, let me go ahead and turn you around. <coughs> so, the person that I was talking about yesterday in my video about the whole COVID, having friends that are COVID positive and wanting to go, that person wanting to go stay with them while they were sick. Uh, that person did not go over there. But this morning, that person did test po positive for COVID. So, we are going to have to take extra precautions that we don't become COVID positive if we're not already. Um, I don't feel sick. Well, any more than I have been. Actually, I feel a little better than I have been. So, I don't think the person has spread it to us. Although, I wouldn't know unless I took a test. So, I mean, if we take a test, it'll probably be sometime this evening. Uh, my wife and I were going to go to Maverick's Dance Hall in Buda to meet with some friends. I don't know how this is going to affect those plans, so we'll find out later. Um, I just wanted to go because one of her friends that I want to see is going to be there. Um, I apologize if the wind noise gets too loud. Because, you know, I, I don't dance. I'm not a dancer. I got three left feet. Okay, that wind is kind of chilly. Anyway, yeah, I'm still waiting on Walmart to get back with me once my background check comes back. They said five to ten days. It's only been three, so we've still got a little bit to wait. I should have worn my leather jacket. Oh, well. I did end up calling O'Reilly's yesterday after I made that video and explained to them that I was offered another job and I accepted it and it paid like five dollars more an hour so they understood you know I got to do what I got to do now I apologize you know for getting their hopes up that they were gonna you know have me work for them because they were looking forward to me working with them because not only do I have driving experience I have merchandising experience which would have helped out in setting up the new store so yeah I kind of feel bad but then again I don't because I'd rather work for Walmart and get that extra five dollars an hour <laughs> 
Yep, you know where I'm at. Barking ass dogs. I mean, I had a feeling, I have a feeling if I was COVID positive, I wouldn't be out here doing a walk and talk. I would probably feel too sick. So I don't think I'm positive. Of course, the other person is, um, has been up and about and been feeling fine too. So I don't know how this, you know, Omicron strain is hitting people who are vaccinated. You know, if, um, these people become positive and are asymptomatic or, or what, but I feel fine. You know, I'm not running a fever. I can still hear, I can, I can still smell and taste things. I'm smoking and it's not affecting me really. Um, So we'll just wait and see. And if my wife wants to get us tested this evening, we'll go buy the tests and take them. I mean, that's what that's what this other person did. They bought the home test kit and tested the one that looks like a pregnancy test. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I'm probably, I'm debating on whether I'm going to get on the computer today and do some gaming or if I'm going to sit in a Zazzle store and make stuff. I want to say that I had set up that mug shop uh, Zazzle store that I was wanting to make and, and start making some mugs and say different things and populate it and get it out there or if I just want to sit on uh, you know the geckos trails or sacred forest gifts and just make stuff but I thought I would get some more things for sale and share them try to try to get some sales I'm, I'm gonna have to do something there was a new um, Facebook viewpoints job that had populated yesterday about um, COVID-19 and me so I took the first installment I did the first installment of that job and it's got like 10 or 9, nine more or it's got several more steps to do and it's going to populate like once a week and over the next two months and then by the end of it I'll have made ten dollars but hey that's ten dollars I didn't have before I started and that'll go to my PayPal account <clears throat> you know what I think this has been wet like every day like standing water I think one of these pipes actually froze sprung a leak there in the middle. And my wife wasn't too happy about me turning down the O'Reilly's job because she's wanting basically me to start making money right now. <laughs> because, you know, she's been out of work and gonna have to pay all this money back but on that front they did her work did uh, put out um, a memo stating how they were going to cut that money that had been paid out basically you can set up a repayment plan that's anywhere from 10% of your pay to 50% of your pay and that's that's gross pay before taxes because um, they had originally put out that they were going to you know take 50 percent of the people's checks to repay it but i guess too many people complained so they reworded it so they would have choices of anywhere from 10 percent to 50 percent
which is easier on us because you know we have you know two thousand dollar rent and we have to have and i'm not going to get a paycheck from walmart for probably another month yet so and they're not going to start uh pulling that money out until like the first check in february so <clears throat> That's, that's welcome news. Uh, you know, with COVID and everything going the way it is, and all the all the stuff that's going been going on, it just makes me want to get my backpack and shove it full of food and just go somewhere and just leave all of this behind for the foreseeable future <laughs> you know kind of like what nightcrawler and super classy did during that first wave of the pandemic they just got in their van loaded it up and went out to some public land somewhere in the middle of nowhere and just stayed out of society's way for damn near the entire pandemic uh, or that first wave of the pandemic and then once stuff quieted down they did the Maricopa Trail and had a miserable time. <laughs> yeah, y'all should watch that Maricopa Trail uh, through hike that they did on either one of their channels, you know, Nightcrawler or Super Classy. Um, that's a trail I wouldn't want to do. I mean, just for the simple fact that it's not a wilderness trail. It's kind of su a suburbia trail, you know. It basically goes all around Phoenix, I think. Uh, Maricopa County. But, uh, they did not have a good time. And there's not really anything around here that I can do. I mean, if I wanted to, I could go out on the Lone Star Trail. You can hike that pretty much any time of the year here in Texas. <clears throat> I mean, granted, you know, like, not last night. Well, last night got pretty cold, too. But the other night, it got down to, like, 25 degrees. So, you know, I would have to be bundled up. But it's not like we have to, like, worry about, you know, blizzards or, or whiteout conditions or anything. Like what would have happened on Appalachian Trail and, say, the Smoky Mountains. You know, they probably got a lot of snow with this storm that's going through. You know, or even, like, Colorado. Colorado's probably been dumped on quite a bit with this storm that came through. I don't know. I have to talk to my my friend at the Y. He's he's still there, um, Eduardo. Uh, he's going to be there till April, I think. Yeah, I miss being there. I will admit that. I wish I could have stayed. Finances did not permit it. Oh, there's smoke on the horizon. Fire going on.
Oh, somebody bought a three pack of Fireball. <laughs> I heard some coyotes howling last night out this way. It was, you know, really cold, so, uh, you know, sound carries a long way when it's cold for some reason. I don't know why that is. But I've, I've noticed that when it's really cold and the air is real crisp, sound travels a lot further. And I don't know why. Maybe it's the lack of humidity in the air. It makes the air less dense. I don't know. Anyway, it wasn't a pack. It was, you know, one coyote howling. And then off in another direction, there was another coyote howling. But it was just one. You know, it wasn't a whole pack. And for once, they were doing it without any, like, police or or fire truck sirens going on. Usually it's the sirens that prompt them to start howling and yipping and everything. But yeah, I didn't... I know I'm kind of jumping around in my conversations, but I'm just, you know, talking as the ideas come in my head and the thoughts come in my head. But yeah, the the thought of, you know, just throwing my backpack on and getting out somewhere and staying just is very appealing to me right now. Not necessarily through hiking at this point, just being somewhere where I don't have to worry about, you know, being in contact with society and and kind of leave all this hoopla behind and not have to worry about it and, you know, dwell on it. And, I mean, it's, it's, it generates high anxiety and, and a lot of worrying. Especially when you have people around you that you care about. And I don't know. Maybe that's selfish of me. But, you know, I can't help the way I feel. You know, I pretty much have everything that I would need to be out, you know, camping right now. The only thing I'm really lacking is a sleeping pad. But I don't necessarily have to have a sleeping pad if I don't want it sleeping directly on the ground, you know. I got my sleeping bag. I got a tent. You know, I got my backpack, you know. I might not be, you know, I, I don't have my dry sack, so I don't have anything to put my gear in to keep it water, you know, keep it from getting wet if it rains other than a pack cover that came with the backpack but you know I can use a garbage bag you know just tie it up it'll keep things dry and we have garbage bags little sit sacks you know I can close it up you know twist the end of it and then tie it with the straps Keep things dry. You know, I have one for my clothes, one for my electronics, and, you know, one for my sleeping bag and clothes. Granted, there's nowhere out here really to go to be on I, I don't think we have any public lands out here where I'm at um, maybe once you get up into the hill country where people have cattle but not in our 
immediate region here you know, on the I-35 corridor, you know. You'd probably have to get somewhere close to the border and, and out beyond west of Blanco, Johnson City in that area. Texas, you know, where there's a lot more open space, less population. And, you know, part of me was actually, um, instead of doing the Appalachian Trail this year, doing the Continental Divide Trail. Because I kind of got my hopes up last year when I decided to do the Continental Trail instead of the AT. <clears throat> and I know um, Nightcrawler and Superclass here are going to do the CDT this year again. So I don't know. Just, you know, being out where there are less people just has a, a certain appeal to me right now. I know the AT, there's a lot of people that's planning on, on hiking, through hiking the AT this year. So it's going to be pretty populated this year. You know? I mean, there's pros and cons. I, I would like to be on a trail that's well-defined, you know? I mean, on the CDT, there's more chance for you to, you know, take a wrong turn and get lost, you know? Not, not necessarily lost, but not where you want to be, you know? And because it is a choose-your-own-adventure type trail. I mean, it's not really a trail trail. It's, you know, like I said yesterday, you're hiking in a corridor. I, I think it was on the, the, uh, the edition that I didn't delete because <laughs> I made two videos. Uh, one I deleted, one I didn't. I basically talked about the same things, but I can't remember. I remember saying stuff about it you know, the Continental Divide Trail being a corridor. But, you know, that's that's the main difference between the AT and PCT versus the Continental Divide Trail. On the AT and PCT, you have a continuous footpath, you know, a trail from the southern terminus to the northern terminus to, for it to constitute a through hike. You have to have walked the official trail the entire way well on the cdt there's there is a trail but it's not finished um so what constitutes a through hike of the continental divide trail is a continuous footpath within a 50 mile corridor of the geographic um location of the actual continental divide which is an actual elevation based line that goes from basically you know the mexican border to the canadian border maybe not so much in new mexico until you get into the northern parts but still As long as you hike within that 50 mile corridor the entire way, you've done, you've done a through hike of the Continental Divide Trail. So, and honestly, the Continental Divide Trail goes through areas 
of the United States that I really like, you know, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana. You know, I really enjoyed my time in Yellowstone and Glacier National Parks. And I also enjoyed my time in the Rocky Mountains when I was working at the Y, the YMCA of the Rockies in Estes Park. And where I was hiking on Flat Top Mountain, if you went across the saddle to the next mountain, that's where the Continental Divide Trail was. So I was almost on the trail. <laughs> I mean, I could have easily hiked to the trail and back instead of just trying to go to the top of Flat Top Mountain. And that would have been really cool to have actually set foot on the Continental Divide Trail in the year that I was planning on through hiking the Continental Divide Trail. You know, I didn't get to do that. Eventually, I will get out there and through hike. I have no doubts about that. I have just, I just have to wait until I have the finances to do it. And this year and possibly next year, I may not have those finances. It might not be until 2024 until I can get out there. Um, Because my youngest daughter has already been talking about moving in with her friend Paige. And she is currently working two jobs and um, she's enrolled in classes online through Arizona State University, ASU. Um, the oldest daughter. Um, she's working on getting her driver's license, but she's also talked about moving out. I don't know where or with whom, but she is talking about moving out when our lease is up. So that would free us to not resign our lease and for my wife to go do travel nursing if she isn't already, because she's been talking about possibly um, doing a travel nursing assignment as early as April or March. And once she starts that, we can start putting money away for a through hike. Um, even though we still have rent to pay, she'll be making like two or three, two or three times what she's making now. Or, um, she can use her money to pay the bills at the house the girls aren't paying and put the rest of hers away um, and then I can take my paycheck from Walmart and put it away I have that um, that other checking account now I can go ahead and have my wife link it with everybody else's um, so she can shift money around or whatever and just have my check direct deposited into that account and then as, as she needs money for bills she can, she can take it out of that account and put it in the main account um, but if she doesn't need it it can just sit there you know and I can be saving money for a through hike. And maybe by doing that, I will be able to get out there next year. Uh, so that's, that's a hope. I don't know. And of course, I still got the grant. The grant that I've applied for. I may, st I may still get it. I don't know. Um, they're, they're giving 100 of these $10,000 grants out. chosen I don't know um, I, I do claim
claim as a disabled veteran and a member of the LGBTQ community. So, you know, there's your minority basis for consideration. And it's also in the arts. So, I don't know. And I will, I'm keeping my eye out for other grants and other sponsorships as they come along. And of course, every once in a while, when I see a, a really good sweepstakes on Instagram, I will enter it for gear or whatever. Um, it's, it's either gear or gift cards for outdoorsy type places you know I can always use those or I can turn around and and cash them in there's websites out there where you can cash in gift cards um, and you basically give them the codes and they'll give you money to, you know to compensate you for the gift card so I could do that as well but, you know, if it's gear that's, you know, better than what I have, I can sell the gear that I have or keep it in reserve in case I need it. And if it's gear that I don't need or don't want, I can sell it on Dosh. Or take it to, um, if it's a brand that REI, um, carries I can take it in and trade it in for something I would want you know or clothes or whatever you know because I do need better hiking clothes I mean I've got this, my the shorts that I sleep in that is definitely going to work on the trail um, my underwear of course and my stretch down hoodie will work on the trail. I would like to get a Ghostbuster or two, but, you know, I don't have $300 right now to, to buy that. But, see, if, that's one of the things, if, uh, REI carries, go, uh, Mountain Hardware, I could trade that stretch down hoodie in for, um, a Ghost Whisperer or two, because they cost about the same. Actually, I think the Stretch Down hoodie is a little bit more expensive than the Ghost Whisperer or two. But, you know, the Stretch Down hoodie, you know, it's a good jacket. I, I'm not saying that it isn't. It's a bit long, though. It comes down to my mid-thigh, which it's supposed to. Um, but the hood is overly large and it does not have a drawstring because it's designed to wear over a climbing helmet because it's mainly for rock climbing and rappelling. Um, so, I mean, it'll do in a pinch if I, if I, if I can't replace it. It's a, a very good jacket. And, you know, it's a $300 jacket, and I got it for free, so you can't complain with that. Uh, but, yeah. I think I'm just going to go ahead and turn around right here uh, after these cars pass and head back. I don't necessarily need to walk all the way to the interstate.
I don't know what all these little plants are down here. But they have these like melons on them. And they don't get much bigger than that. But they look like watermelons. And when you split them open, they smell like watermelons. So I don't know if they grew melons out here at one point and it just seeded wild wildly. But you see all these little plants here are these like melon type bushes that have just grown wild because <clears throat> all that was cotton you still see some of the white out there the areas they missed when they harvested but these little melons have been everywhere and of course during the summer it was, it was all sunflowers too so they must have grown sunflower seeds at one point as a as a crop and it started growing wild because these fields were full the, the, the fallow fields uh, were full of sunflowers just completely covered in sunflowers roads are going to go through eventually because all this is going to be the whisper uh, commercial properties and they're going to have like industrial type warehouses out here and over there now yeah, except on the corner down there they're going to have that gas station I think they're getting ready to build more stuff out here. This is going to be a difficult episode to come up with a title for because I haven't really talked about anything specific. I've kind of rambled between topics. I mean, yesterday was kind of hard too, but the, the newest bit of information was waiting on Walmart, so that's what the title was. I guess I can talk about, or I can title it something about... Uh, Wanting to head into the wilderness because I did talk about that because you know the pandemic and everything all the stress and anxiety that's kind of surrounding me at this point of course you know it's not really feasible with me fixing to start a new job <laughs> I guess I could go ahead and cut it off for now. I mean, I've talked about pretty much everything I can think of. So let me go ahead and turn you around. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, not really much else to talk about. Um, so far, I haven't made any sales of my two new Amazon books that I can see. Uh, the links were up there um, not the video that I just posted that, was, that I filmed yesterday but the episode before that it was like a 
six and a half minute long video titled two new books on Amazon KDP. Um, I do have the links for those books in the description. Um, so, um, you can like, uh, copy and paste it into your browser and go to those websites on Amazon. And, uh, buy a copy of the books if you would like and like I said before all the sales from these books is going to go into my hiking fund and of course you can always join my patreon I haven't really mentioned it in quite a while but it's there uh, so far nobody's joined it um, I got payment plans ranging from a dollar to a hundred dollars a month. Oh, somebody's trying to call me, but it's a Houston number. I don't know. I haven't, nobody in Houston should be calling me. So if it's important to leave a voicemail. But yeah. Other than that, I mean, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscriber button, that subscribe button. We're up to 126 still. Um, and if you found any entertainment value or worth in this video or any other videos that I post, go ahead and hit the like button. And while you're at it, swipe that notification bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video to Gecko's Trails. That being said, y'all stay safe. Get out and hike a trail, man. Hike more, worry less. That's my motto. So, y'all take care and we will see y'all next time.